you know, chemistry is definitely a core technology, but then you also need to be aware of engineering principles that gives you the vision of actually making things, you know, coming up with technology. Out of graduate school, my first uh, job was at the Environmental Protection Agency, and I was doing two things. One is I was looking at some indoor air pollution, and the other is I was developing novel techniques for monitoring air pollutants at very, very low concentrations, at parts per billion level concentrations. I saw sort of big air pollution research at regional level and national level, and at the same time at laboratory level, you know. Uh, so, so it gave me a global picture of air pollution and environmental research at that point in time. LNJIT uh, had some excellent environmental research centers that uh, promoted and funded much of my early work, especially with environmental monitoring. My goal was to monitor pollutants in real time. You know, I wanted to do trace monitoring in real time. You know. So for example, there's a water treatment facility and you know, right now we take a sample and you know, send it to the lab. My idea was to develop instruments that continuously monitor these things. We needed to concentrate the pollutants and we always looked for good adsorbents, you know. And that's how I ran into carbon nanotubes, you know. The performance of the carbon nanotubes were just amazing, you know. These were amazing adsorbents. You know, I mean, I had been working with carbons of different types for a long time, but I had never seen anything like this. So with carbon nanotubes, the tubes are like tubes. These are solid tubes, so they kind of stand like this. And then uh, the adsorption happens on the surface. So things will absorb on the surface and then they'll come off very easily. And that's what made carbon nanotubes unique. One challenge was the nanotubes typically were very inert or they don't react very easily. So a reaction would take like sometimes 24 to 48 hours or maybe even more. So one of the things that we did is we developed a technique uh, which is based on microwaves. So basically which was, we're just taking the nanotubes and cooking it in a microwave. And then on, in microwave conditions, the nanotubes became very reactive and they reacted very quickly. So the reaction that took 24 to 48 hours could be completed in a matter of minutes. So this gave us the capability to form nanotubes with various functionalities on them. And then we could develop new applications based on these nanotubes. So we started changing the absorption characteristics by uh, putting, for example, uh, zirconium oxide and then we could remove arsenic from water, you know. We put iron oxide and we could remove fluoride and arsenic from water. And then we also put them on membranes and we found different applications, for example, in water purification, uh, removing water pollutants uh, and also in seawater desalination. The other applications that we looked at is the carbon nanotubes as electronic material. So we put them in solar cells, and in solar cells they were excellent charge carriers. You know, they are wire-like structures, so they could be like the copper wire to sort of improve flow of electron and eventually improve the efficiency of organic solar cells. So the conventional solar cells are great, you know, their efficiencies are very high, but they are made of silicon, they're expensive, they need rigid, massive structures. So the future is in these paintable solar cells, where basically you can paint a photoactive or a solar material on any surface, and that surface could act as a solar cell. It could go on the roof, it could go on the side of the building, or it could go on the window, you know, as a tint. So there is tremendous potential in some of these technology that, um, that are enabled by the carbon nanotubes and other types of nanotechnology. The, the other very interesting application uh, that we are working on is uh, making flexible batteries and supercapacitors, you know. The whole challenge here is how to make each component flexible and the carbon nanotubes play a great role here because they have excellent electrical properties and at the same time they are mechanically strong. The flexible batteries that we have made uh, have performance that are very comparable to the AA, AAA type of batteries that you buy in the, in the grocery stores. So I can see flexible batteries coming into the market in the near future. I mean, it's great fun playing with these in the lab, and uh, eventually uh, we also hope that they will be incorporated into commercial products and things like that, and, and that's all well and good, but all products eventually, you know, head for the funeral. So basically, eventually they're thrown away. So there is the potential for carbon nanotubes becoming a pollutant of the future. You know, what will happen to them in water? You know, will they swim? Will they sink? Will they, you know, will the fish eat them? And so there are all these questions, you know. So I've been actively working with the National Institute of um, Environmental Health and my personal interest is can we have a safe design of a carbon nanotube? Is there a green version of the nanotube? Something that is less toxic than the other. You know? <laughs>
we live in a highly materialistic era, so where you know economy drives our lives, you know, and it's not just us here in America, you know, that's that's a global phenomenon. So at, at some point, you have to balance, you know, economics, technology, and, and the environment, and uh, that sort of is my goal, you know, a balance, you know, so so you can have a sustainable earth at the same time, have excellent technology, so we can live well, you know, so we have a high standard of living.